call me pastor. So I got to check you when you're in error. I got to check you before you wreck yourself. I'm declaring something is going to be said that's going to change your life and your legacy. So I was sitting in the back going over the message for this morning. Spirit kind of spoke and said this series of rebuilding our communities is basically the Greenhouse International Church Pastor Ian Decker State of the Union. Annually, President Barack Obama gives an address to the country that he serves communicating his vision for the country. And so I guess without even systematically, strategically putting it this way, rebuilding our communities is the state of the union of the Greenhouse International Church. Uh -huh. I like that. Last week we dealt with the call. You can take your seats just for a second. Last week we dealt with the call. I, I pray you go to the electronic media and watch the full sermon to inspire you to answer to the call on your life. Because all of us, listen, all of us have a call. Your call may not be to preach in the pulpit, but you have a call to do something in your community. And your community just might be your address. But you have a call as a father. You have a call as a mother. You have a call as a son. A call as a daughter. A call as a student. Whatever your occupation is, you have a call to operate in that occupation with the spirit of excellence. Because if you operate in excellence, God will excellently bless you. Last week we dealt with the call. Today we will deal with rebuilding our communities. We will deal with the challenges of rebuilding our community. On last week, as we said, we discovered that Nehemiah realized and accepted he had a call on his life. It must be twofold because many of us may realize the call, but we will not accept the call. There are some very gifted people sitting here right now with a call on their life to do greater than they're doing to get off the sideline and stop being an observer and to be a participator. You see the need, you recognize the call, but you haven't accepted the call yet. So it's my job as your coach, Pastor inspire to stir you up, to stir the gift on the inside of you for you to answer the call and remember every day you don't answer the call. There's a need in this world, in the universe, there's a need that's going unmet because when God created you, he gave you a gift and said your gift would make room for you. So your gift is your call and every day you go without answering your call, you create a void in the universe. The cosmos is chaotic because you're not answering your call. Nehemiah answered his call to rebuild his community. And today we're going to deal with the challenges associated with the call. I, I wish I could tell you that once you answer the call, that peace and prosperity would be the byproduct of the results of you answering the call. But Deacon, this is the reality. The bigger the call, the bigger the challenges. The more people God will assign you to impact, the more Satan will assign his imps to attack you. So if you're under great persecution, if you're going through all kind of hell, if you're struggling to keep going, if it was a difficult task to get up this morning and get out of bed and get to church, that lets me know not that you're under attack, but that lets me know there's a great on your life and Satan trying to stop you before you get going Stephen Covey puts it like this just as we develop our physical muscles through overcoming opposition such as lifting weights when you lift weights you put a stress or a strain on your body muscle and that's how they grow and expand we develop our character muscles by overcoming obstacles and adversity. So every time God places adversity in your life, it's not to defeat you, it's to grow you, to build you, to strengthen you, to answer your call. 
So I dare you right now to give God praise for every challenge, every obstacle, every situation. Don't let it be a distraction. Let it be a development. I need you to tell the devil every time he starts messing with you, God, let me develop in this situation. Because you do realize before we had instant pictures, a picture had to go through a dark room to be developed and processed. So the dark process you're going through right now is not to defeat you. It's for you can see clearly your vision, your purpose, and your destiny. Because God woke you up this morning. And when he woke you up this morning, it was not by happenstance. He woke you up on purpose, with a purpose. The But like Whitney Houston said, you were born and built for this. And you were not built to fail. The heavier the weights fail, the stronger you get. That's why it seemed like you were always under extreme pressure and stress and strain because God has something big for you. Don't bail out a bad marriage. Come on, that's good, man. God is trying to develop the man in you. Come on, come on. The woman in you. And if you hang in there, you will get strong enough to lead a marriage ministry. The financial strain you under right now is not to bankrupt you, it's to build you. To build you to a point where one day you'll be a financial empire. If you continue to press, press. That's it. Oh. Yes. let us stand the reading of God's word. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 2. Oh, God, thank you for your word. You see me leading protests across the city whenever there's injustice. But I want to always make this message clear. I'm pro cop. We love you. We appreciate you. Give our hand, give our hand, give our hand. Now you can do better than that. Come on, give our hand. If some crazy person running here, she's gonna protect us. In the book of Nehemiah, chapter two. So boy, that boy really become a politician. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter two, verse eleven. You shift with the call. Yes. The call will change you. Yes, it will. The call will rearrange your DNA. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Who I thought I was. Come on. Come on. The call has redefined me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What I used to call good church, the call redefined what good church was. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Not how loud I can make you scream. Yeah. Come on. 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 Nehemiah chapter 2, we will begin reading with verse number 11. I went to Jerusalem, and after staying there three days, I set out during the night with a few others. I had not told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. There were no mounts with me except the one I was riding on. Jump down to verse 16. The officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing because as yet I had said nothing to the Jews or the priests or the nobles or the officials or any others who would be doing the work. Verse 17. Then I said to them, you see the trouble we are in? Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace or shame. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on me, and what the king had said to me. So they replied, and I pray for a day GHIC will reply like this, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. Verse 19, this is the reality of the challenge at hand. But when Sambada the Horonite, Tophet the Ammonite, official and Gerson the Arab heard about it, they mocked and ridiculed us. What is this you're doing, they asked. Are you rebelling against the king? Nehemiah says in verse 20 conclusion, I answered them by saying, 
the God of heaven will give us success. We, his servants, will start rebuilding. Take your seats. Today, we're going to talk about rebuilding our communities. We're going to deal with today the challenges of rebuilding our community. Because just like you watched the Rockets last night, every time the Rockets got the ball and tried to score, the Golden State Warriors put up a defense to prevent them from scoring. So I want you to know right now, everything you're trying to accomplish and achieve in your life, the devil has designed a defense. And the devil is not lazy like a bunch of church folks. The devil stays up all night strategizing your strengths and your weaknesses because the devil will devise a plan to get you off of your game. And the game plan the devil has designed for me will not be the same plan he designs for you because he's not lazy. He's going to make sure he customizes his game plan to take you out because the temptation that you will fall under may not be the temptation that I will fall under, but be sure the devil knows your strengths and your weaknesses and he's coming to try to take you off your game. But if you have a good coach, he will prepare you to stay game ready. Is anybody here game ready? No matter what the devil throws at you today or tomorrow, you're game ready. Watch this. That's good, man. The Bible says this the backdrop of this scenario of rebuilding the community. That means the community had to be able to be in a position to be rebuilt. So the walls were down. And we talked about last week the danger of the walls being down. So the call to rebuild the walls is very important because the walls serve a dual significant role in the community. The walls protect the community from outside forces, but the wall also, and many don't realize this, the wall is not just to keep some folks out, the wall also is to secure those that are in. When you build a wall, it's to keep the enemy out, but it's also to make sure those inside the wall are protected with an infrastructure that will not allow them to collapse. Well, it's important for a man to be in connection with his family. Because the man is the wall. And when the man no-shows, the enemy comes in and those that are in, depending on the man's wisdom and the man's strength, the man's protection, they're left uncovered. That's right. That's right. Yes, Lord. Jesus. It's a shame when there's a noise outside. And the woman has to be security Come on, man, God. to go check out the noise. Come on, man, God. And you call yourself a man. And even when you're there, come on, man, the God. Come on, God. Come on, My God. Let's look at this. Do we all agree that we must rebuild yes. the wall? Do we all agree that there are some major issues in our community and we must rebuild the walls? Yes, yes. And I don't have to watch the news to know things are right. right. <laughs> Drive up and down the street and see young people with hopelessness in their eyes. That's right. oh my God. The walls yes. need to be restored. Yes, yes. When I woke up this morning, and three out of every four children that woke up this morning woke up in a home without their father. The walls need to yeah, be yeah, yeah, rebuilt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good, man of God. When you can't trust the powers to be, the walls need to be rebuilt. We're going to look at both internal and external challenges of rebuilding the wall. See, it'll be easy to come here and shout you over the wall. But I gotta be realistic. Because when you get through shouting, there's gonna be some major challenges. And the only thing I did was arouse you emotionally, you're gonna give up. See, that's the difference between a championship team 
and a good team. When a championship team gets down, they come together and press. A good team, when they get down, they put their heads down. You want to be a good church or a championship church? It's easy to focus on the external challenges. Uh -huh. My God. Because we're accustomed to facing opposition, uh -huh. competition, uh -huh. critics. We, we, we overuse this word hate. Uh -huh. But the reality of it is, some of you are saying you have haters. Jesus. And I can bust your bubble, but you have to be doing something. For somebody to hate on you. You're using that hate of nation as an excuse to not reach your full potential. Because it's easy for me to blame somebody else for me not reaching my full potential. See, it's easy for me to blame the weather or the woman or the woman. It's easy for me to blame the White House. But what about your house? So we spent a great deal of time focusing on external challenges. The black man blame the white man. The brown man blame the white man. The white man blame the brown man, the black man. But stop looking for somebody else to blame and pull up Michael Jackson, look at the man in the mirror. That's the only man I'm competing with. The one in the mirror. That's right. Is the one in the mirror getting right? That's right. Everything he's connected to will get right. That's right. That's good, man of God. That's the word. That's the wall. Come on, it begins Jesus. with the man. That's good, so man. We fail to realize the biggest factor in our fail success ratio is not from external challenges, but internal challenges. You do notice when you read the story, Nehemiah spent a great deal of time alone uh -huh. dealing with the call on his life. Uh -huh. And even when he traveled, the Bible says he traveled in a small circle. All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. In the beginning. But many of us do not have the faith to be small. Jesus. We're people pleasers. But people pleasers rarely ever succeed on, at a higher plateau. Because you are afraid of offending the people. So you stay stuck conforming to the people around you when you've been called to elevate the people around you. But I can't elevate you if I'm rubbing elbows with you. And I'd rather you like me than me answer the call of elevating you. I pray you got the shot on when they were singing. Because I come to work. Nehemiah, get this, Nehemiah didn't even share the call with his inner circle. And sometimes, when God is dealing with you, you got to be quiet and spend some quality time with God so God can define your purpose and your call. Because if you jump out too soon, you won't develop enough to handle the challenges that will come you. I know a butterfly can't stand the cocoon experience, but without the cocoon, it'll never be strong enough to blossom. Many of you are struggling in your marriage because you got married before you knew who you were as a woman or a man. But you were afraid of being alone. But it's alone what God develops you. It's alone what God strengthens you. It's alone what God gives you the ability to love yourself first. She can't love me unconditionally if she don't like herself. That's right. That's good. That's good. Jesus. Jesus. Nehemiah had to work through some mental preparation. For himself first. Uh -huh. I can't stand up here and tell you anything about God. If I haven't spent some quality personal time with God, I can't tell you God can bring you out if, if I've never experienced.
experience God bringing me out? I can't be effective telling you about God if I don't have a real relationship with God and not just a favor relationship, not just how God is blessing me. Yes, God is blessing me. I'm thankful, I'm grateful, and all that, but I'll never forget how the hell God had to bring me through to get to this point. I'm going to tell you a whole story, not just the ending of how I'm flossing now. I used to struggle. And the struggle did not come from external factors. The struggle came from internal factors. Jesus. I knew a long time ago I would end up here. But I tried to get here too fast. Without the development process. I didn't want to spend time in a dark room. I wanted to be seen. Can, can I be transparent? Yeah. Yeah. The problem with the modern day church is you pray one prayer, on, somebody say amen, next week you're a bishop. You never proven any character, on, never proven any stick to this. Come on, preach. Come on. Stick to this when, when y'all act crazy and I keep showing up. There's some 37 year old church members. Come on, Pastor. Okay, okay, okay. okay. That's good. Mental preparation. I'll pray you're taking notes. This book word. Number one, you must get your mind right first. You must get your mind right first. And stop worrying about somebody else's mindset. Adjust your mindset. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Now that's great. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Mental toughness comes with getting your mind right. Yes, Lord. Mental toughness. We declare for more than the conquerors. What an awesome God we serve. Oh, glory to Jesus. Yes. We whip out yeah, yeah. at the slightest yeah. sign of yeah. opposition, yeah. a challenge, yeah. or resistance. Yeah. We whip out. Yeah. I don't know if I can take yeah. out. I don't know if you I can do this. Now, now, suddenly you were shouting, "What an awesome God I serve! Yeah. I'm more than a conqueror. Yeah. We can do this." But as soon as the northern wind blows. Yeah.
concerned about your spiritual development. I'm not concerned about your mental toughness. I'm not concerned about your growth. I'm only concerned about you showing up. That ain't right. Amen. If every now and then you don't leave your some Sunday mornings mad to preach you, I'm not doing my job effectively. I don't want you to always like me, but you gotta always say, but he got my best interest at hand. I didn't like my coaches making me run up and down on field. I remember one, one, one exercise. They start at the goal line. They go to the 5, come back. Go to the 10, come back. Go to the 15, come back. That was hard, but they had the end in mind. Because they knew when the fourth quarter came. You had to be game ready. And the church are not equipping the members and the saints to be fourth quarter game ready. That's why divorce rate is higher in the church and the pulpit than in the club. That's why the children in the church are losing their minds. We're not fourth quarter game ready. You better preach. My God, this one, we ain't fourth quarter ready. Jesus. We're chasing the wrong motives. Jesus. Hammers. We ain't fourth quarter ready. But it's time to check your motives. Get your mind right. Because God has a future and a destiny waiting on you. Number two, you must be able to see it before you can share it. You must be able to see it before you can share it. I can't convince you. Of where we going? If I don't clearly see it, Jesus, Jesus. I can't tell you what's out there. If I can't clearly see it, because faith is not believing in what is. Faith is operating like what is is not, but what is not is. Come on! I thought you didn't get that one. Come on! Come on. Faith is not cashing your check. Faith is believing that when you punch the clock Monday morning at 8 o'clock, that the check gonna come on Friday. And you put in a good effort Monday through Friday, believing by faith that at midnight on Thursday, your check gonna be deposited electronically in your account. But you don't clock in and say, I hope they pay me at midnight on Thursday. Because you believe that payday is coming Friday. So why are you getting God's house and panic like God ain't bigger and better than your boss? You do know your boss will fire you for any reason. You do know the state of Texas, they can fire you with un a cause. But God has not fired you. Even though you should have been fired. Faith is having confidence in my God. <laughs> yes. Even when you misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. Talk to us, Lord. I got so much confidence yeah, 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 yeah. in the call that God has on my life. Right. Yeah. That people with little faith are irritated by my big faith. Yeah. Jesus. Oh. But that ain't my issue. Right. Oh. Thank you. Be irritated by my faith. See, faith is like Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's invisible. It's invisible. But it has the power yeah. to connect you, you to preach. what you need. Yeah. You I can't I can't show you my faith. Yeah. I can just operate in my faith, and my faith keeps connecting me to what we need. I see it, and my job is to convince you to see what I see. Yeah. You better preach, Pastor Decker. Number three, you must be willing to keep going when others quit. You must be willing to keep going when others quit. When you go home and, and do a Bible study, look at Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 10. It reads like this. Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of the laborers is giving out. There is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. The people were getting tired. The people were ready to throw in the towel.
while, but Nehemiah had a call and he had to keep pressing. Even when the people got tired, he had to keep pressing because Nehemiah had a Philippians 3.14 attitude. I press on toward the goal. I press on toward the prize which God has called me. And when you have a God call, it's not based on the people's response. When you have a God call, you make your mind up when you wake up in the morning. If don't nobody else show up to the wall, I'm going to show up to the wall. When you have a God call, you encourage your family. As a me and my house, we going to serve the Lord and we going to rebuild the community. I don't know what they going to do down the street. I don't know what they doing around the corner. I don't even know what my mama going to do, what my daddy going to do, what my brothers and sisters going to do. But I know as a me and my house, we going to get on the wall and rebuild the wall one brick at a time. If we got to do it by ourselves, when you got the call, it doesn't matter who has answers. The call gets in you like it got in Candace. That's what I gotta do by myself. I'll do it. Jesus. You gotta press this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At some point in your walk of faith, because we walk by faith, not by sight, you have to get strong enough to run by yourself if that's what it takes. season to see which players going to quit and which players going to keep pressing. So next season the players who quit get cut. But those who keep pressing keep their job. I wonder when times get tough how many of you keep pressing. Because times will get tough. You must be able to handle pressure before you obtain prosperity. Yeah. Say again, number four. You must be able to handle pressure before you obtain prosperity. Why would God blow you up financially and you can't handle the little you already have? Oh my God. Oh my God. You, you buy something to make you feel better Lord, instead of getting mentally Lord, tough okay. and realizing stuff don't make you feel better. Right. Stuff just costs you stuff. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's good. If you don't feel good when you step out the shower, my God. Yeah. Come on. nothing you put on gonna make you feel any better long term when you take the weave off that thing you suck in every day you take all that off if you don't like what you see you gonna spend all your money can I, can I help you? That stuff you're doing is not for you. It's for other folks. You spend all your money. Other folks can look at you, but you don't like looking at you. And then you have the audacity to say, when you get to the Lord's house, I ain't got no money to store into the vision. But I really love the fact that God using my man of God. I love my church. My church doing so much for the community. I keep seeing my pastor on the TV. He's helping so many people. When me and my family get into a bind, my pastor always there. But can your pastor the same thing about you? Ouch. like this. Show me someone who has done something worthwhile and I'll show you someone who has overcome adversity and challenges. You can't expect God to blow you up and you like go do something. God will see if you'll stick to the plan when the plan does not look like it's working. Number five, 
who time flies. You must be willing to sacrifice. Jesus, Jesus. You want the glory without a story. You must be willing to sacrifice. You don't think those men who get up every Sunday morning while you still sleeping, hit the snooze button, that's driving you home trucks and unloading sound equipment and stacking chairs and making sure everything is right and tight when you get here. You don't think every now and then they want to stay in the bed. And by the way, none of them get paid one red dime. They keep showing up every Sunday morning doing God's will, making a sacrifice. But if you trace their life, you'll find the fog is following them. The favor of God. When the last time you made a sacrifice for the Lord? When the last time you made a sacrifice for yourself? When the last time you made a sacrifice for your children, for your spouse? You say you want God to use you, but God can't even trust you. Yeah, that's right. Oh, the power of prayer. 
Yeah. Uh, so you just get some write-up I'm, 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 I'm rapping this. I'm going fast now, but this is, the whole, my, whole, my whole dialogue will be in this week's forward time. So get it. So you can read it and study it all the way out. Amen. Don't forget the power of prayer. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Bible says, hear us, this, this Nehemiah. When they start coming against him, Nehemiah didn't cuss back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nehemiah didn't come off the wall to prove himself. Nehemiah went to the Lord. Come on, yeah, 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 yeah. Hear us, oh God. We are the spies. Turn their insults back on their heads. Give them over to us as plunder in the land of captivity. Do not cover their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight. So we will rebuild the wall. Nehemiah said, Lord, it's about you and them. We're not going to get involved in that nonsense. I dare you to tell your enemies right now. I got too much good in my life to be worried about your nonsense. You can go on Facebook, Instagram, and you can do all the talking you want to do, but I'm going to stay on the wall. I'm not getting no battle with you. You're not battle worthy. A while back, about the rivalry between the Cowboys and the Texans, Michael Irvin threw some shade and said, you can't have a rivalry with somebody not at your level. You rivalry with both names at your level. Okay. Come on, Pastor Jessup. Yes. I can't stand them Cowboys. You tell the truth. For now. Right on. For now. Hands up to feel yourself back up. But when you got your hands down, that's the 
need attitude. You can't work with your hands down. You can't fight with your hands down. You can't get your praise on with your hands down. And when you're not praying, when you're not praising, when you're not pressing, you lose it.
right now on the wall. Let me change the power of the